Today, I want to talk about what are some of the best capstone projects for Ivy League schools that will absolutely surprise the college admissions committee members in a way that will make them want to talk to you during an interview and then hopefully actually accept you and uh, allow you to go in and start your education. Now, what this is really important because when you're applying to a top tier school or an Ivy League school, or let's say, you know, somewhere like Oxford or Cambridge or a very competitive program, let's say in Canada or Australia, normally those competitive programs have further requirements that some of the lower tier colleges and universities don't have. And that normally includes, hey, what type of experience you have? What type of extracurricular activity you've done? What can you essentially show us in order for us to be convinced that you are essentially worthy of our college or university? And if you're a mom or dad watching this uh, for your child, you're probably thinking, what the heck do we have to do to be able to be prepared for the college application process? And that's exactly what we want to talk about. But before we get into the specifics, I'd like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Beruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at BMO. I'm joined with one of our associate managers of consulting here at BMO, Veronica. Veronica, you're, you're good. You can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Veronica, I think what we got to do is today, uh, you know, whether it's a college applicant watching or most likely their parents and or with their parents, we should probably give a little bit of background. What we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of background on uh, the capstone project, why it's important, what type of activity makes sense. Then we could uh, talk about how to choose this project. And then we would like to give you some examples that we think are best or different or, or examples in, in certain different types of realms that might make sense for you or for your child if you're watching this and your parent. So a little bit of an overview. So what's a capstone project? You know, essentially it's an independent project that a high school student has done during high school that is not necessarily part of their curriculum in high school. It can be, it's rarely it is. And it demonstrates a few things. For me, it has to demonstrate four things. Specific interest in something they're interested in, depth of knowledge in whatever they uh, are claiming to be interested in. It should also demonstrate commitment and progression in that activity. So let me explain what these are. And then uh, Veronica could jump in here as well. And then you could also tell us how we could choose something that makes sense for this criteria. So specific interest, I think that one is pretty self-explanatory, right? You can have a project that's about computer science, arts and music and entrepreneurship. Like it can't be everything that makes no sense, right? Specific interest to Depth of knowledge, the quality and the details and, and the amount of effort that's gone to this usually uh, can demonstrate this. For example, if it's a project that's taken two, three years, more likely I, me as an admission officer, I'm going to be convinced that this person has that depth of knowledge, which in, incidentally also uh, proves that commitment that I mentioned. And what about progression? So commitment, again, self-explanatory. How long did this person commit to that activity? So I can be convinced that they didn't just do this for their college application in the last two weeks. You, know, you can do a capsule project in two weeks and say, oh, this is a fantastic thing. I was really interested. Here's my progression, my coming. No, I don't, I'm not buying that. Actions speak louder than words. But if you've done it for three years, I'm more likely to be like, yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. Like, it would be crazy to do something you don't like for three years. So what about progression? Progression, essentially, should, one way or another, it should demonstrate that this person started from zero or near zero, and they progressed. 
how can you show that in a capstone project? So for example, let's say, for example, the person started a, a an athletic team. Let's say they started a soccer team. So how, how do you show progression? Well, you could show progression by demonstrating that first, there was no team, right? You, not, you don't have a team right away. So what do they do? First, they became really good in whatever team. They were already became a member of another team. They joined a team. Then they worked with a coach and they progressed. And, you know, they went from somebody who was always sitting on the bench to playing 60 minutes in a 90 minute game. So they became a key player in a specific position. Then they were actually able to take that learning and turn it into uh, their own project where they started to build their own team from scratch. And they put players together. They brought in a coach, of course, this shows that the person went from, you know, being someone who was just part of an activity to becoming an organizer of the activity. And then they became captain of the team. This is not their team, blah, 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 all that stuff. So that could show progression. That's usually a little hard, harder for high school capstone projects. So that's essentially what I have. Now, Veronica, can you tell us how we should choose the capstone project? Uh, unless you had some thoughts before we move on. No, I actually think a lot of what I have to say kind of builds up on what you were talking about and what makes a successful Casper project, what you wanted to showcase. So I think first and foremost, really, when you're choosing your topic, because you want it to be a specific topic, you want to also ensure that it's a topic that you're personally interested in, right? So it's something that is not going to get boring for you, especially if you're going to be spending about three, you know, three years on it, even if it's one year, whatever the time frame, right? You have to be willing to do it. Um, with that intrinsic motivation of, I just want to learn more about this, right? I'm ready to mm -hmm. give it my all. So definitely finding a topic that interests you, I think is number one. Now, of course, you also wanted to align with the curriculum and the kind of, uh, make it a kind of space where you can showcase the skills that schools are looking for, right? So whether it is um, community engagement, right? Or perhaps uh, working with adverse populations, right? So depending on what schools you're applying to, what kind of values they have, if you're able to align your project uh, to showcase that you're actively interacting with those values, of course, that's going to increase the, the potency of your, of your uh, proposal as well as your results. Now, the other thing I think is really important is also we sometimes get bogged down with these idealistic um, ideas of what it is that we could cover in a, in, a, in a capstone project. So you have to make sure that your, your goals are realistic, right? You're, um, you're tackling a real problem, right? You're providing real solutions, right? And you're making strong arguments. And all of that goes back to really making it a tangible overview of what it is that you're going to present. So I think that keeping it grounded is really important. And then finally, I think the last piece is really um, making sure that you narrow down your topic as much as possible, right? So not going too broad, because that's going to make it very difficult for you to not only put together your project, but then also have um, be able to arrive at any meaningful conclusions, right? So you'll, you'll run into, I think, more challenges than not. Um, so the more specific your topic, think of it this way, the more specific your topic, the more specific your solutions can be, right? So for example, maybe I'm interested in looking at uh, globalization, right? Okay, well, that's a very broad topic. But what about, for example, effects of globalization on uh, business practices or mm -hmm. schools, right? Something like that. Uh, as opposed to, say, depression, what about influence of uh, gender on depression, right? So specify as much as possible to also make it uh, much more feasible for you to carry out your research and produce results. So I'd say those are my top four recommendations for choosing a topic. Yeah, that's that's very good. Uh, good insight there. Now, what, uh, what we want to do now, maybe we'll give you some examples of some of the projects that will make sense. And then again, uh, you know, if you're a parent, you have to realize what the capability of your child is. What are they actually interested in? Because, you know, even if they want to come into this for a year, it's not going to happen if uh, they're not interested in. So you cannot force stuff. You may want to do some experiments. If you're, an, if you're an applicant or a college, well, if you're an applicant, it's only too late, by the way. <laughs> if, if you're planning, this is something you got to do planning in advance, right? You can do this if you're already applying for college. Well, the tips we're going to give you is, I'm not really sure they're going to help you unless you have something and you're just putting your thoughts together. 
uh, to present that uh, in a meaningful way. But so here are some examples. Uh, quickly, we'll run through the examples and then we'll come back and explain each of them to see uh, how we could explain so that you get a better understanding of what we are thinking of. So here are some uh, capstone project examples that are fantastic even for Ivy League schools. Capsule project example one, athletics. Example number two, arts. Example number three, entrepreneurship. Example number four, life sciences, any project in life sciences. And example number five, projects in computer sciences. So let's go back to the top. Athletics. This one is actually uh, not so uncommon, I should say, but I kind of gave this away. This could come in in the form of, let's say you create an athletic club or athletic league or an athletic team. All of those things are major. Note, I'm not saying necessarily you being part of a team is a capstone project. Can that also be a capstone project? Not sure, because you're not really organizing it. Someone else is in charge of you and you have to attend. It's, that's an experience. It's not a capstone project. That's not a project necessarily, right? It's an extracurricular experience that you could, you could cite. So what about arts? I would say anything in music, painting, film, creative writing of publishable quality for, of course, that age group. Again, you know, we're not expecting somebody to be able to uh, publish uh, something like uh, Shakespeare, for example. That's that's not expected, but it has to be it has to be decent. That's publishable for that age group. It cannot be incomplete, for example. The worst thing is like, you know, you highlight a project that's incomplete. It hasn't been published. Oh, I wrote the outline for a book. Great. That's, that's, that actually backfires because it shows you don't, <laughs> you or your child just cannot finish something they start. So that's, don't, please don't do that. Or, you know, I thought about a film or I had a film proposal, but that's great. Did you film it? And again, we're not talking Hollywood quality here. It doesn't have to be a long film. It could be short, very short. It could be like 15 minute short film, five minute short film. But if it's, uh, you know, created from the writing part, bringing the actors together, it could even be one actor. It could just be your child, by the way, as an actor. Then edited, then produced. It's, that's, that's actually a pretty good project, I would say, for a high school student. Uh, same thing with music. The, the third example I had was entrepreneurship. And then again, you have to be careful what I, I, examples I give because I don't want you to think that you have to go and start a business. If your child can start a business in high school, then they shouldn't go to college. What's the point? You please don't send your child to college if they start a business from scratch that becomes self-sustaining. Instead, help them build the, and, you know, scale the business out of control. Most will not do that. So what are we talking about is, you know, for, I'm thinking of two things, for example, a product or a service, that's just a single product or service and is very niche specific, very limited, but it does have a need. That's why it doesn't turn into a business business, but it does show entrepreneurship. Or they find a new way to sell an existing product or service that helps an existing product or service. That's also good. Uh, definitely those would be a couple of things in entrepreneurship. Uh, what about life sciences? So, I, or, you know, even social sciences, I would say. The life sciences, for example, they've contributed in some sort of a, a laboratory research where they did some experiments with the help of obviously the pr principal investigator in the laboratory or the professor under their supervision. They helped the research that was ongoing because of course their contribution is gonna be limited. And this help could be either the things they actually did in the laboratory or the things they did outside of the laboratory that helped with you know searching online, et cetera. And then eventually, it would be fantastic if their name is on a publication. It's going to be rare. That's not actually needed. 
But if it does happen, even better. Social sciences, you could have a lot of different uh, type of research in social sciences as well. And it's a little bit uh, easier to uh, be able to secure that type of uh, research as a high school student than it is for life sciences because there is less risk involved compared to working in a laboratory. The last one is computer sciences. And this is one that's actually used a lot. So, and it makes sense for somebody, for example, who wants to study, let's say, computer science in college. Uh, writing code to develop an app doesn't have to be any fancy app. You don't have to, you know, develop uh, Uber, for example, but an app that is useful one way or another. A another thing that would be actually also simple and doable, and it it's, it's a good capstone project, is a piece of software written for an existing organization or business that automates something they do that helps them out a lot. Any of those things I think would make sense for me. Uh, Veronica, did I miss something here? Do you have some other thoughts or any anything I, else to add to these? Yeah, I think the, just the one part that I wanted to add to the first point that you were making on athletics. And, you know, if say you are participating in an activity and of course that primarily would go as an extracurricular activity, but then what happens if say you're on a sports team and then, you know, you see that there's a lack of camaraderie among teammates, right? Like, you're in your second year in your junior year and you identify that there's a problem and you take some kind of an initiative right and you introduce a new project to the to the team right and then you're able to then carry that project out for a significant amount of time right observe whether or not it has had an impact what kind of results you're able to achieve right so you could definitely take something like that and then turn it into a whole project on the side of your extracurricular activity so I guess all that to say is that students don't feel like they have to be limited to just the extracurricular experience but they can feel free to get creative in the projects or the the activities that they're already involved in and then potentially turn those into projects yeah makes perfect sense so to recap, let's do a quick recap. First, I think you need to understand what the objective is with a capstone project and make sure that whatever you choose demonstrates specific interest as narrow as possible, demonstrates uh, depth of knowledge, commitment and progression. And you, know, you have to make sure that you go about choosing the activity that actually makes sense for you uh, and there's something that are actually possible for you to do within a reasonable amount of time, given the skill levels you have. And lastly, some of the examples we gave were essentially in any realm that you could possibly think of, but some of the ones we gave were in athletics, arts, entrepreneurship, life sciences, social sciences, and computer sciences. Any of those would work. I think that was it for us. If you enjoyed this and you know somebody who might be struggling with the project, Go ahead and share this with them. If you like to get uh, future videos, podcasts, or whatever social media channel you're watching this, go ahead and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.